K-I-L-R Killer Game Gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to my tour around the world featuring the classic Microsoft Flight Simulator 4. And this is where it starts to get interesting. <laughs> so, let's explain something here. The old flight simulators, such as Sublogic Flight Simulator 2, Microsoft Flight Simulator 1, 2, 3, in order to leave the default area, you had to have a scenery disk. And at the time, Sublogic was the only one that was releasing scenery disks. Uh, their, uh, the, the flight simulator was, was not made for other companies to come in and make scenery disks. Well, that all changed with Microsoft Flight Simulator 4. Because by that time, Bruce Artwick and um, his team, well, they, instead of working for Sublogic, they all moved to Mi Microsoft, and, and that's where the flight simulator continued. So, with version 4, uh, you can now create your own scenery and your own aircraft. And so, even though we've been using the Sublogic scenery disks to help you know, expand beyond the default area. Now we're heading into an area where there is no sublogic uh, coverage, because unfortunately they never did finish the finish up the United States. There were a couple of areas that they didn't get, and Wisconsin and Minnesota was one of them. And that's where we're headed. We're headed. Well, we're in La Crosse, Wisconsin, so further north. And so that's the thing. So how are we going to do this? I'm glad you asked. We are going to be making use of this right here. The Aircraft and Scenery Designer. I bought this brand new. Box is just a little crushed, but everything was sealed. Everything is in here. Got the manual. Uh, and I have been working uh, painstakingly on adding navigational uh, beacons, vor towers, and uh, adding airports. Not every single airport that is in Wisconsin, just the ones that we're planning to go to. Uh, I even spent time putting out the... Um, Mississippi River. I don't know how accurate it is. <laughs> but. Yeah, so that's that's what I've done. And to try to prepare for this flight. And as you can see, I've done some work on La Crosse, which is where we're at. These little trees that you're seeing is not part of the sublogic scenery. I came in here and I put all this stuff in here because I was just fooling around, <laughs> testing it out. So now that we're uh, now that we got that out of the way, why don't we talk about where it is that we're going to be going? Okay, so we have now an IFR map because since there is no sublogic scenery coverage. Well, we're not going to be using that map. <laughs> so we are right here. I, I can't highlight it, but I can move my mouse around it. So we're right here at Lacrosse. Where are we going to go? Right over here. If you can see this, right over here. Red Wing Regional. RGK or KRGK. Now the challenge is 
are we going to be able to get from here to there as far as it being accurately placed? Good question. I did my best to try to get things placed where they can be, and it's not going to be perfect. Uh, I think our best bet is... Well, I've got the radios for Farmington in. I've got Euclid in. They might be too far for us to reach. But we can we can leave uh, Lacrosse, and if we leave at a vector of three one two. Um, It'd be nice if it actually leads us right to the airport. I don't think it will. But uh, we will get this figured out. And since I've now uh, mentioned our new little program that we're using, I'm going to go ahead and throw that graphic right up right down there below. <clears throat> to signify what it is our next phase of flight simulation. All right, so. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> get some radios tuned in. Uh, what was... Was it 108.4? <clears throat> Can't remember. I guess it was 108.4. We got zero here. Yeah, lacrosse, one away. Man, we're sitting like right on it. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to set that at 312, right? Let's do that. 312. And. Let's set Euclid up 112.90. I'm going to set it for a vector of 270. It's a rough estimate. And I think right now that is all there is to it. So. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, get this started. And I can remember... <laughs> Alright. I think we are all set to go. Notice our auto coordination is on. I don't want that on. Turn that off. Yeah, so I put, like, uh, a building in here and some trees and a uh, control tower. It was nothing too fancy, and no, it's not accurate where I put them. And we'll talk about how I actually got, you know, how I found out what the coordinates are and how to play stuff.
turn around and go the other direction here. That's an awfully big tower. <laughs> You can put fuel boxes in, and you've got towers like that one you can put in, a control tower, you got wind socks. I don't think the wind socks are animated or anything. That is the, the cross lake there. And there's some weird shakiness. Like this is going faster than what it should be going. text message. This is weird. This is flickering around. That's weird. I don't remember it doing this before. The time isn't going fast, though. This is normal. But it's just weird. I, all the little flickering and stuff, I just don't remember seeing that. I didn't get any roads or anything in, but I did put the Mississippi River, although it's not, I didn't make it thick enough.
eventually this will end and Sorry, I'm looking at my elevator tram and it's like... Uh -huh. This is weird. Look, look at this. Why is that sitting down there? Technically, I should be nosing down, but I'm not. It's because of... The, I don't know. That's odd. So we're getting up to about 3,500 feet. The problem with the river is that it's maybe it's the weather. Maybe this random wind is blowing us around. I don't know. trying to center my elevators here because it was set at something crazy. waiting for that straight and level flight here. We're getting blown uh, off to the right. Just slightly.
So what I had to do in Flight Simulator 4 and the versions before it, it uses an XY coordinate system. Flight Simulator 5 and the others now use or longitude and latitude. So how do you convert between the two? Well, I wasn't able to find a really good conversion utility online, not one that translates to Flight Simulator 2. However, Flight Simulator 5 uses both. It has the XY coordinate system and it has the longitude and latitude. And I believe it's the last one to actually do that. So, I used the longitude and latitude and put those into Flight Simulator uh, 5 into the uh, go to exact location uh, function. And when you type that in, it gives you the XY coordinates. So, with all the nav radios, I put them in longitude and latitude, wrote down the X and Y coordinates, and then came into here in the Flight Simulator 4, and then placed down all the radios and the, air, uh, the airports, the runways, and the uh, Mississippi River. That was something that I did using Flight Simulator 98. I tried to keep it as close in time frame as I could. So with Flight Simulator 98, it had the Mississippi River going up. So I would zoom out and take a zoom out from the map view take a screenshot and then scroll down take another screenshot and, and along the way I would get longitude and latitude points like whenever the uh, river was making a turn and then I used that and then put that into into flight simulator 4 I just didn't make it thick enough and I'm wondering if that's it ahead this is kind of thin and I'm wondering if that's the one that I created. I'd use a wing leveler, but then we won't be able to turn at all if we do that. It looks like the river ends right here. Alright, so while that's going, I want to show you what I was talking about in regards to getting coordinates and um, I'm going to use the Mississippi River as an example. So right here is see if I can change this up a little bit here. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. So all of this is from Flight Simulator 98. Right down here is Lacrosse. And this here is the Red Wing uh, Airport. So, what I did is I wrote down 
or I took a screenshot of the coordinates and then I would do that at various different places. So I did it here and here, 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 there, there, there. And then finally there's lacrosse, which as we saw, there was, you know, the sublogic scenery disc already had part of the river. So basically when you when you create a river with flight simulator four, uh, it's just a polygon really. Uh, think of it as a rectangular shape and you're just kind of drawing it out on the uh, on the uh, ground. So it's it's gonna be a crude uh, <laughs> a crude river. Definitely not going to be accurate or anything, but I wanted to get something in there. You okay there, Tonya? And I didn't want to spend too much time with it because I knew night was coming. And we may not see that river anyway. We can see it for the moment. Look at this one. Completely blown off course here. But in about five minutes, we might not see any of that stuff. I thought maybe we would reach my river uh, before it all goes dark, but I don't think we're going to make it. Came alive. So, how far away is the Kitley Eclair? Forty four miles. Okay. So that's good. That's a good sign. That means the the uh, the radio the uh, navigational beacon that I put in is working. Let's see if the river is still here. If the river disappears, then what we'll do is we'll head north and try to catch this 270 radio and see if that will take us over to the airport. We might be able to do it with this uh, vector, but I don't know.
I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to put in airports and scenery and everything because otherwise we won't be able to get the flights done so I'm trying to put just enough in there to allow us to, to keep going and <laughs> I figured out how to actually load scenery now so all those uh, sceneries that I had downloaded and couldn't figure out why they weren't working I'll show you here in a moment let's see what happens here at 1730 around. Four, three, two, one. Nope, completely black. All right, so we're not going to see our river at all. So we'll go ahead and turn this way then. Yeah, this will be fun because I got no roads or anything on here, so I got no visual clues at all. This will this will definitely all be VFR or IFR. So, in order to load scenery, let's say you uh, you get scenery from FlightSim.com, some uh, Flight Simulator 4 scenery. There's no particular folder that you put it in. You just you put it into the main Flight Simulator 4 folder. Now, in order to load it up, you have to have this um, expansion. You have to have the aircraft scenery designer. So you go over here and you go to mode. You go over here to scenery designer, which is J. And then you're going to hit static scenery designer. And then you're going to get this area here called Static Scenery Li Library. That's what you want to click on. So you click K. Now, I, I didn't know this. I was building everything under the Seattle area static scenery. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, I didn't start learning this as, until I started going. But oh, you've got things here you can merge scenery files. You can change names. I don't think you can uh, pick pieces of one and into the other. But if you take a look here at all the different, there's all these custom ones here that are untitled. DuPage. Here's the DuPage Airport that I had downloaded, and installed. Didn't realize I would. I just selected here, and, and and it'll be up. Here's all the other ones. Eastern Iowa, Kankakee. Here's another DuPage. Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee I just recently put in there. Uh, Western Iowa. Western Iowa. Oh, yeah. Just... Um, so it would have uh, airports. Yeah. Uh, Ch Champaign-Urbana. So... Yeah, so that's what you do. You, you select it, and you're good. And you can do that while you're in flight, and, and so there's no problem with that. So if you're going from one detailed airport to another, um, that's fine. And each area can only be filled up to a certain point. And then you have to create a new one. So 
if we go back to this again and go to scenery De designer and go to static scenery do you see how it says here capacity use 88 um, percent and i started detailing out a few airports and this figure started going up uh more than i wanted it to so i'm being very careful on on what i put so that way because once this fills up i'll have to use a whole nother uh, scenery thing which i didn't start at zero this was like 68 because i didn't realize what i was using I, I hadn't figured this out yet but at that point but i'd hate to have to put all my navigational beacons and everything in so i'm going to try to do it all on this one if i can although some of you may be saying hey why don't you uh put it in its own scenery thing and put it up on flysim.com well i might i might i i don't know i i i think there are people that got a lot better talent than i do when it comes to making scenery I'm, you know <laughs> But hey, if you think I should, then, you know, then we can take a look at that. Whoa. Not quite sure what happened there. see here. We'll tune in to Farmington Radio, which is 115.7. 115.7. Okay, so that's tuning in, that's good. And I was looking at the map and look at zero seven two should be Yeah, so that works on both of these. So hopefully, hopefully when these two match, we might be somewhere near the airport. I'm going way too high now. Yeah, these flights into Minnesota and Wisconsin are going to be interesting. We're going to be flying up north. Um, we do have plans to go to Duluth. And then we'll be wrapping ourselves around to the east and then coming back down south. And then we will come back to La Crosse. And 
then the older flight simulators will continue to follow along with us. But right now, Flight Simulator 2 for Amiga, Commodore 64, Microsoft Flight Simulator, simulator 2 and 3. I don't think one uses standard discs. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. But they are all stuck at lacrosse for the moment. They're not going to be able to come with us. And naturally, the older simulator, or the newer simulator as well. There's no restriction there. Well, I'd still go with that pie. Tumblr does, dies on December 17th? What is this? I thought Tumblr was already dead. I have a Tumblr account, but most of the stuff on there is garbage. This is from Clownfish. Yeah, we're going to do a doctor. Yeah, we knew about it. Oh, this is the thing where Tumblr's banning all adult content from December 17th. But, and my thought is good. I mean, it's a bunch of trash on there. Star Trek Axanar, back in production. The real short treks. <laughs> Minecraft creator destroys NPCs with red pills on Twitter. This Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. Has anyone watched that? I've actually heard it's actually better than what people first originally thought. I haven't seen them, so I don't know. We can do an unboxing. We'll do an unboxing of uh, of this, just to show you what what you get in here. Requires Microsoft Flight Simulator version 4.0. Oh oh oh. All right. So you get a cardboard thing. So you get your your user guide here. This is a hefty little thing. And you get your Microsoft license card right here. Your proof of license.
Want the address of the most important person at Microsoft? <laughs> So do we! This is a registration card. Mail your registration card today. It only takes a minute, but the benefits go on for years. News that keeps you growing. Everything from newsletters packed with great ideas, examples, tips and tricks, to news about seminars, training, and user groups in your area, all to help you get the most from your product. The latest updates including special announcements and prices for the newest, hottest versions of your product, plus many others. Answers when you need them. Just call 800-426-9400 for sales and customer service. You think that still works? <laughs> I don't know. If you require text telephone services for the deaf and hard of hearing, TDD slash TT, call 206-635-4948. So that we may serve you better, please let us know how you currently use your computer. Spreadsheet, word processing, relational database, presentation graphics, project scheduling, CD-ROM. That's interesting, it says CD-ROM, but back when this came out, Putting games on CD-ROM was a very rare thing. Although it did happen with Flight Simulator 5.1. So, basic programming, application development, accounting, recreation. Project registration, Microsoft Corporation, P.O. Box 3019, Bothell, Washington. 9804199910 All right, so what else do we get in here? We get our program itself. This is what I'm saying, it's brand new. It's all sealed up in here. See that? It's got a It's got a tear open here, so this thing is fresh in mint condition. A floppy. And then you got the regular floppy right here. I guess that depends on which one's the regular floppy. <laughs> the five, uh, five and a fourth, five, was it five and a, yeah, five and a quarter is actually the real floppy. Or you could say the regular floppy. And the other, the three and a half disc is... It's more like a hard floppy. So yeah, so you can create aircraft in here. Aircraft design. And this, this came out from Microsoft. It's got Microsoft on the back. Um, from Bruce Art Vick and team. Microsoft making it all make sense. I don't know about Windows Millennium Edition. Windows Vista. Did that make all sense? I don't know. Maybe they lost that motto as, as time went on. So you got aircraft design using the enhanced aircraft designer. Rotation to rotate an aircraft. All right. Menus, files. To name a file, the main wings, changing the wings pad. Angle of incidence. Induce drag. Changes to the dihedral. Winglets. Airframe and propulsion. Power. Horizontal stabilizer. Surface area. Angle of incidence. Lift coefficient scale. 
tail, vertical stabilizer, damping effects, pitch damper, row damper, yaw damper, stability augmentation, color and visual design menu, color design visual effects, you can add aircraft numbers to the Cessna, Cessna seaplane, and experimental prop plane so that pilots, ground personnel, and air traffic controllers can identify your aircraft. Weight balance instruments and structure menu. Weight and balance, dry weight, fuel capacity. Center of gravity, center of lift. Inverse moments of inertia. Instruments, overspeed warning. Sim switches, stall warning angle, enhanced instrument panel, enhanced instrument panel will not be available unless you have an EGA or VGA 16 color 640 by 350 video display. Laps, lift, drag, coefficients, spoiler drag, touchdown drag, slip drag, slow drag, drag queen, <laughs> dynamic pressure effects, control sensitivities, man this is long, airline sensitivities, elevator half and elevator eighth, miscellaneous, appendix, Beechcraft Starship? That's what the heck? <laughs> Boeing 747-400 What's the Starship thing? <laughs> Seriously, that, it's in there. This. It's right underneath Piper Cherokee Archer. Is that Beechcraft Starship? Should take a look and see if did they just like for fun make a starship or something? Craft Starship. Uh, let's see what the good old Android phone has to say about that. Starship or something. Beechcraft Starship. Oh. Well, that's what it is. That's well, kind of a cool thing. So, it looks like the propellers are behind. Like the propellers are pushing it. See, let me take a look. You see the propellers back there? I mean, that's got to be the front, right? Or maybe that's the tail. I don't know. It looks like the front, though.
Gee, I wonder if that's actually in the game. We should look at it. That might be interesting to try to fly. Here's another picture. I thought they were totally making this up. Here's what I want to know. Is it for FSX? Yep. Oh, it must be new. Well, obviously the plane's not new. This dates back to Flight Simulator 4, but... There's a Beechcraft Starship version 5.1 for FSX. Flyaway Simulation. I've gotten stuff from that. Beach was looking for a new generation of corporate transports. They looked to Burt Rutan's scaled composites to design and produce the SCAT-1, an 85% scale technology demonstration of a Conard configured aircraft. I guess there's a Flight Simulator 9 model too. Here it is for FSX. If you look, you can see the propellers in the back. Here's another picture. This one's at night. Flyawaysimulation.com, that's where it's at. Five stars. People love it. Great job, wish I owned the real thing. <laughs> I bet. Did I just... Okay. I'm trying to make sure my stylus is in here. I don't see any payware versions. All right, now let's look at X-Plane. I'm seeing some movement over here. Beechcraft 2000A Starship, civilian fixed wing oxplane.org forms. It's got a picture though. No, I think they did do it. I think someone actually did make it. There's X-Plane. Huh. What do you think? You think we should try it? Oops. Beachcraft2000A, X-Plane.org. I think it is. 
Down yeah, that's downloadable. Bunch of reviews that I can't read. They just say, did you find this helpful? Not really, because I did <laughs> I didn't read anything. that is. If that's my crappy river. <laughs> Could be my crappy river. I don't know. Maybe at night it lights up. disappeared. These are coming in. Okay, so where's the airport? I think, is that it? I think that's it. I think our airport is right over here. down here. Then again, that is an airport, but that's not it. Red Wing has only got one runway. That's got two. That's Eau Claire. We're here at Eau Claire.
Yeah, I was looking at this here and realizing that we're getting close to the Leclerc bore and that's not where we're going. At least my, I know my airport that I put in there is in there. Alright, we'll try this again. I think this is the river that I put in here. Because that's the only thing I can think of that would... I mean, it shouldn't be lighting up. I think we're far. Oh my goodness, I wasn't tuning into the right radio. Crap. I was tuning into Eclair. I should have tuned into Minneapolis. Minneapolis is 115.3. Oh, hold on. So again, I, I put the Minneapolis rate, uh, VOR radio in, so that is a custom thing. One thing's for sure, we know this this course is going to take us to Minneapolis.
there's no VOR radio at this airport, so it's because it's a small airport. So trying to find this would be interesting, considering I had to place it by hand. And it's not like I flew there to try to find it, you know. I made sure the airport was there after placing it. it made a safe file and load it up. But Somehow I got way off course here. Oh, there it goes. Got glowing UFOs in the <laughs> clouds. This thing looks like a glitch fest. Oh, disappeared. Flick, 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 flick. Speed, my speed has dropped down. I could have made this easy and I could have gotten a could have flown us to an airport that has a radio, but I don't know, Red Wing Airport, that sounded interesting to me. Nothing is more exciting than looking 
at a mostly black window with a white crescent shape for a moon and some flickering stuff. <laughs> yeah. And somehow I'm still going up. I don't know how. something over there. I wonder if that's my airport. Seems to take a long time for this to move. Well, there's an answer to our question on whether or not the game is moving faster than what it should be. If it was, oh, I don't think that would be uh, taking so long. I think I saw something over here that looked like a runway.
my, my goodness, we're like here looking with anticipation. Is that really the airport? Or something else? here and this gets close to the center we should be somewhere close to it. we should be able to see it is out here, I do know that. This is blowing us. Of course. stupid needle thing is not is not coming in any closer it seems.
Oh my goodness, this thing is just... I don't know, has it moved at all? Are we moving? <laughs> yeah, we're moving. Because this is at least going down. It's halfway in between. Dang it, I thought I saw something. There was something else that I got, I think, for Flight Simulator 4. I thought I got it. Oh, the needle on the top's moving. one I ordered Grand Canyon if I did I'm not seeing that I was going to. <laughs> turn those weather effects off. This is getting a little annoying. I thought I'm, there might have been something to turn the weather off. Not really. You have to go in there and delete everything manually. I don't want to do all that.
looked at the map again, Red Wing is like halfway in between. So when we started off, it was like 60 miles. So we should see it around 30. It didn't go dark. If I go by river, it would have taken us there. I know you're probably thinking, why don't you just turn it to daytime then? Well, because I'd like to see if I can find it with the instruments. That's why. Found one airport. This is getting closer. I guess I'll check my eBay account and see if I actually did pay for that. Maybe I bought it overseas and it's taken like two months to get to me. I do have it. I did order it. I got it the same day. <laughs> Maybe it's back behind here. Take a look. I've got um, no. This is something else. I've got these binders that I've been um, picking up from a former pilot. He passed away, and his daughter is doesn't want all everything that he's done to go to waste. So. We're working something out to where I'm, uh... Man, my voice sounds weird. Where I'm, uh, getting these... Turn that down. Where I'm getting the binders, uh... From her a little bit at a time. That's Iowa. I don't know. Red Wing is Minnesota. Yeah, there it is, Red Wing. 
it's a little bit more closer to Minneapolis than it is Eclair. Minnesota list of airports. He's got Brainerd checked, Duluth checked, International Falls, Minneapolis, of course, except that is King, K A N E, Jane's Field. Rochester, St. Cloud, that's it, hey, Will Wheaton, he's got an airport, no. <laughs> just Wheaton, W-H-E-A-T-O-N, Wheaton means what airport, it might be nice, who knows, okay, we should be, it should be like right here, somewhere, got a list of files that he downloaded. Huh. I'll have to look at those. In the meantime, where is this airport? It should be right here. Of this, I'm going to pull up the map display. I think this is it right here. So we are close, it's just it's not exact. All right, hold on. Let's take this off. So if I turn. Maybe at a heading of 072? Let's find out. Ooh, I bet. Yeah. I don't think that is it, but that. Maybe? I don't know, everything's just flickering around.
it's not it, we're going way off course. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's it, because I can see gray right there. There's no river. This isn't the river I created. Where is it? No, it's too thin. It's not that one. That's just a regular line. There's the blue. <laughs> I think that's my river. So maybe we can see the river at night. <laughs> well, that would have saved us a lot of hassle.
See, and I got taxiways on here too. I didn't do, you know, really anything all that special. Yep, that's it. I recognize it. And plus, it's right next to the river. Some of these are supposed to have the Pappy lights, but there's no option to put Pappy lights on here, so I use the uh, the Vossies. sure if I can land at my own airport. up with this thing because the wind is just blowing us sort of landed. <laughs> We're on the taxiway. <laughs> stuff is like the texture boxes. It's not really texture, but it's using the, the small rectangles. It took us a little bit to find, but we're here. This is Red Wing. I recognize the airport. <laughs> I made it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on this flight. This was interesting. Hey, we've only got 34 miles to go from Minneapolis, so that, that'll be a more shorter flight. 
but uh, anyway, be sure to check this out on the uh, other flight simulators after Flight Simulator 4. Not the old ones, there won't be one. Uh, other than that, I will see you on the next leg of this journey. Take care. If you enjoyed this flight and trip back in time, then you might enjoy some of these other videos I made of the same flight. This is just a small sample of the other simulators I'm also using for the world tour, so you can check out how things compare there if you like. Or perhaps you have fond memories of one of them and just want to see more. There will be more flights, so remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around in the skies.